So, let's talk about what it means for Q to be interpreted. An interpreted programming language is one in which the code is evaluated immediately upon entry. So in Q, we have what's called the console, where you type. As you type a line of Q into the console and hit the return or enter, the Q interpreter evaluates the code and returns the result to you. So let's see how this would look. I'm going to enter an expression, 6 times 7, and we see that Q gives us the answer, 42, which, some of you might be aware, is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. The little Q paren is what we call the Q prompt. That means the interpreter is waiting for you to type. So I can type 42, and it will echo 42 back. So this is how an interpreted language works. You enter code, it evaluates the code, returns the result back to you on the following line. All right, so now we're doing code. So we talked about Q being dynamically typed. What does that mean? Well, every value in Q is not just a value like 42 or JAB or January 1st, 2018. The value has an associated type. The type indicates the structure of the data. So 42 is an integer. It might be of type int or long, depending on how wide we store the integer. Date type would cover January 1st, 2018, et cetera, et cetera. So Q has types for all the regular data that you're accustomed to in your normal programming languages, but it also has types for things that you might not be accustomed to. For example, Q has types for functions. In Q, a function is data, as in most functional programming language. And so there are types for data in Q because functions can be passed around just like data. So what does it mean to be dynamically typed? Dynamically typed means that whatever entity you're looking at, Q will tell you its type based on the value that that entity has currently. So if it's 42, it's an integer type. If sometime later it changes to January 1st, 2018, then it becomes a date type. So this is dynamically typed. You don't have to declare the type in advance. The type is whatever the type of the value is that the entity is associated with. All right, so much for that. So let's talk about useful types. First class of types in Q is numeric values. So numeric values are things that you're used to, like integers, or floats, or dates. But dates have their own type. So let's just stick with integers and floats. In Q, there are various types of integers. There are 16-bit integers, 32-bit integers, 64-bit integers. In the current versions of Q, called 3 and higher, Integers are 64 bits. The name for that type in Q is long. So if I type 42, that's actually a 64-bit integer underneath the covers. All right? Sometimes we'll see a 32-bit integer, and it will look like this. It will have a little i after it, which is short for the int type, which is a 32-bit integer. In this context, the 42, the wide integer, is called a long. All right, so that's a little Q speak. Q has the normal arithmetic operators. So for example, you can add. We've already seen multiply. We can subtract. And we can divide. And here we hit the first quirk of Q. Division in Q is not slash, as it is in every other programming language. It's percent sign. There are reasons for this, but it's just a fact of life in Q. When you want to do division, you'd use percent. The other thing you need to know is percent always gives a float response. You see the little f next to the 2 on the console? That's a floating point 2, not an integer 2. So that's a trailing type indicator, which is how Q normally does types. All right. So we know how to do normal operations in Q. But let's face it. If your programming language in 2018 can only operate on a pair of numbers at a time, it's pathetic. I mean, do you actually have to write a loop in your programming language to add two lists of numbers? Probably you do. But in Q, you don't. You say, I have a list 1, 2, 3. 
Those are integers, obviously. And I have another list, 10, 20, and 30. And I want to add the two lists together. It's no different than just adding 1 and 10. You put the plus sign between the lists, and Q says, ah, oh, all right, I'll add the list together. This is what we mean by vector programming language, right? Vectors are just lists of numbers. It's mathematical terminology. And Q, any time it makes sense for an operation to work on a list of numbers or a pair of lists of numbers, it does. And that's most of the numeric operations are vector operations. And in fact, some of the ones that you would not expect are also vector operations. So let's talk about what we can do with lists in Q. You can see that the way we denote lists of uniform types of numeric values is with just spaces between them. So there's 1, 2, 3. I could do lists of floating points, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. There we go. 